Hey everybody, it's Jefferson with Bow Birdie Magazine. Uh, today we have my friend Scott Kleiss from Habitat for Humanity. Um, Scott, you're causing a little bit of an issue. Um, you're the first time I've ever interviewed someone that's not an avid golfer. And I always start with the same question, which happens to be a golf question. So I'm going to ask it to you and just answer it however you answer it and we'll go from there, okay? All right, all right. Would you rather have two pars or a bogey and a birdie? <clears throat> That's an interesting question since I don't play golf. Um, I'd rather have, aren't they the same? <laughs> I'm not going to help him oh, with the answer. <laughs> okay. I'll go with two pars. Okay. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to speak about Habitat for Humanity. Which, by the way, I thought I understood until a few months ago. Scott and I had lunch, and I realized I didn't understand it at all. Um, so, Scott, if you can, uh, just in case there are some viewers that are as stupid as I am or uh, that need to be enlightened about Habitat for Humanity, can you tell us what it is, who it's for? Just give us a little idea of it. Yeah, um, Habitat for Humanity, um, we're an organization, uh, Christ-centered, and we help families that wouldn't normally be able to uh, get a mortgage, get a home, uh, be able to afford a new home. And uh, the thing that's a little different between us and some of the other uh, nonprofits that work in the housing industry is the people that we help actually have a mortgage. So they're paying their mortgage, they're building equity, they're building wealth and yet they still have a great home to live in for uh, their families. And this is where I was a little bit off track. For some reason, I was just thinking you gave people houses. But it sounds like, in fact, you told me, and see if I read it down here, you told me you'd rather offer someone a hand up instead of a hand out. Right. And so it seems like they're very much involved in this. And you, you told me, in fact, they can help sometimes on the... the um, parts of the physical building or painting or aspects depending on the individual? Yeah, actually we, we require what we call sweat equity. Literally, um, it sounds like. Yeah, and so they can build, uh, help build, they can help paint, you know, they may not have skills uh, in framing or electrical or plumbing and may not be able to help in those areas, but certainly uh, we have a very good construction manager that works with volunteers and he trains volunteers to do certain skilled tasks and so a lot of times family members will take uh, opportunities to do that and learn new skills. If they can't build, that's a, no problem either. They can help in the office. They can work in the office along with our staff to get those uh, hours in. Or we also have a restore. So a restore is kind of like a, a goodwill of sorts but it focuses on home goods and construction materials and that sort of a thing. So if you get discounted prices, we get donated appliances. And so we're working on a project. They were actually our new townhomes. Okay. Uh, we started on uh, Park Road. The first one was up on Northern Park Road. And we were working with a engineer, civil engineer, Coleman Engineering on that project. And so we got to know him through that construction project, another construction project, the owner is Gil Coleman. And he was vice president at Habitat for Humanity, Central Valley Habitat. And he invite, asked me if I would like to be on the board uh, of directors. So, so had you ever heard of it before? I had, I had heard of it when I lived in Georgia. So I had built a house in Georgia and the, the church I went to, there was a gentleman that went to church there with me and he helped me on the weekends to build my own house. And he, I asked him where he learned how to build and he said that he volunteers for Habitat. Okay. And that was in Augusta, Georgia. And so I had heard about it. I asked him a little bit about it. I didn't get involved at the time uh, then, but I did hear about it there in Augusta. Okay. And so Gil asked if I'd like to be on the board because he knew I had some you know, knowledge of the construction industry. Yeah, really good background with the construction and so on. Right, and the project management. And so I agreed uh, to join the board and uh, been on ever since. It's been about four years now okay. that I've been on the board and now I'm board chair. Okay. And I've been board chair for one year. Nice. 
So we know a little bit about Habitat for Humanity. We know a little bit about how you were introduced to it. What does golf have to do with Habitat for Humanity? So when I was on the board, they, you know, they're wondering, you know, we have a banquet. We have an annual banquet every year and we raise a lot of money through the banquet. And the board was trying to think of other ways to raise money. And coming from Augusta, Georgia, while I'm not a golfer, don't play golf, um, I did go to the Masters a few times okay. just because I lived there. Well, hang on a second. <laughs> You're from Augusta, you go to the Masters, but you don't play golf, but you are connected with golf through Habitat for Humanity. We got to get you out there golfing. <clears throat> well, I did golf once, so okay. I, just, I just don't talk about it. <laughs> it was that bad. It wasn't a great experience. Were you, were you traumatized? Well, it wasn't the best time of my life to golf. <laughs> it gets you better. Know, I had young children um, and new a new career, and so it just didn't seem like the best time. Maybe maybe now is a better time to pick right? it up again. Well, so we're talking about golf and, and Habitat for Humanity, yep. and you do something very special in this area to raise money. Yep, and that is, uh, we, I suggested a golf tournament, and I took that same, what I would call best practices, and brought it here, and we had our first golf tournament two years ago, and we raised $37,000. So your first one went beyond what you promised you could deliver. Right. Nice. And so our goal for the second one was 40000 and we raised 42000 Nice. So I was in both of them, by the way. Um, one of them, a tree almost fell on me, but that's another video. Um, so Scott's kind of a renaissance man. Uh, he's a little modest, a little shy about this, but uh, he's good at a lot of things. And I, he uh, is a pianist, loves music, uh, a minister. Uh, he's a vice president of retirement community. He's a technology expert and so forth. But he's also kind of funny. Um, and I, I, I think he has the right personality to make things work. And in this case, with the tournament, I've been in hundreds of different tournaments. This one was really special. It was, it was fun. Um, you could tell there were a lot of um, contractors and, and just people that were involved in Habitat for Humanity that believe in it. So every hole, you were inspired. There was good conversation. Um, my gut feeling is, if you want to, Scott, that this tournament will continue to grow, that it, it, each year it just seems like more and more people want to be involved in it. Absolutely. Um, glad you mentioned that. The, uh, the majority of the attendees to the golf tournament are contractors, general contractors, um, skilled trades, you know, HV, plumbing, electrical. Okay. And what I found, you know, by working with those general contractors and subcontractors here at VMRC is they do like to play golf. Yeah. And so I said, hey, how about you come play at our tournament? And um, so we all already knew each other. We had a relationship. And so when I first joined Habitat, I started with the Resource Development Committee. And what that committee does is try to reach out to trade partners, okay. which are general contractors or subcontractors, any skilled trade, and ask them to either donate their time, donate materials, even just give us a break to help re keep the cost of the construction down as low as we can so that we can give the best opportunity to the families we serve. And so that's who, that's who we target for the golf tournament. Right. And it get, lets them have some fun. They have a day of fun playing golf, and at the same time, they're contributing to uh, affordable housing in the community. Yeah, it's kind of a win-win, right? Yeah. Um, so what I want to ask you is, uh, with our viewers out there, and whether it's five viewers or 500,000, um, hi, Mom. I know at least one. Um, what could the viewers or the, um, the people in the community do to help you? Uh, can they volunteer? Can they donate money? Can they get in on this tournament? Um, challenge us. What can we do to help Habitat for Humanity? Well, um, for the golf tournament, uh, volunteering is very helpful. If you're not a player, if you don't play, uh, you can certainly volunteer because there's a lot of work to be done uh, for the, before the tournament and during the tournament. Okay. Um, everything from the actual tournament itself 
to the leading up to it, you know, we have to get sponsors. Like I said, the key to making money in a nonprofit is don't pay for anything. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says that, I think. That's a good one. <laughs> so you try to find everything you can and get it sponsored, you know, okay. whether it's your food, your beverages, great. Okay. But I will say that uh, Lakeview um, Golf Club is where we have it. Nice. That's and, a, a um, very nice course, by the way. They're a great, great partner. And matter of fact, um, Ryan Height, who's the general manager out there, is on our our golf committee. Oh, I didn't know that. And so he he does everything he can to to make it as affordable as uh, he can. Yeah, for good habitat. good guy. I've, I've spent uh, a lot of time getting to know him uh, out there um, with another group I was with, and I was very impressed by him. But volunteers um, now, what we don't. First, we don't start up when it comes to having teams play. We won't um, let a team just pay to play. Okay. So we're really looking for s corporate sponsorships. Okay. So, so you're specific in who's a part of this. Yeah. So if you're, you know, a trade partner, if you're a contractor, you can be uh, other businesses. We have banks because I mean, obviously, banks help out with sure. Habitat as well. Um, we have professional firms. We have title companies, law firms. So any business, any business doesn't have to be in the uh, building industry, can uh, sponsor okay. and sponsor a team. And so we like to do that first because they get advertising, they get publicity uh, for their sponsorship. And then in addition to that, they get to have people play. They can have people from their company play, but I really recommend that a company uh, buy a sponsorship and then invite their customers oh, to play. Oh, good one. That's a so, twist on that. Yeah, invite your customers. Say, hey, I got, I have four um, rounds of golf. You know, you can get a team of four and we'll be happy to sponsor for you. Maybe hey, you have two people, we'll have two people and we'll make a day of it. Nice, nice. Well, Scott, I appreciate you doing this interview with me. Um, I've learned a lot more about Habitat for Humanity. And I challenge our viewers to uh, uh, definitely jump in and, and help however they can. Uh, from bunkers to burgers, it's Bo Birdie. Thank that's you. A, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>